This week I learned five years can zip by in a breeze. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another weekly update. And I know I, I just keep trying and trying to get these back on Fridays, and then they started to roll to Saturdays. Now they're on Sundays. So sometimes the best laid plans just don't work out, but it has been a week, and we are going to talk about that here. I'm going to begin, like always, by talking about what am I reading. Well, guys, I did finish Snowbound by Blake Crouch, the great reading slump breaker that is Blake Crouch. It's more than once now this guy has helped get me out of a funk that I was in reading-wise, and I just think that you just need a nice, good thrill, a nice little sugar rush once in a while. And that's why I described this book as it was very much a sugar rush. It's not going to be one of those where I say, hey, when I'm listing the best Blake Crouch books, it's going to be one that I name, but it's very much readable. Anyone that has read other Blake Crouch will probably find many things to like about it. Very fast-paced, fun story, had a really cool ending. I was very satisfied with it. I had Sometimes he likes to leave his endings a little bit kind of up to you. Now, I would say quite ambiguous, but he does kind of have to leave like yeah, a little bit where it's going to stick in your head for a few days. Again, that's just the type of writer he is, and I think he's very, very good at it. But this, I had a hook right off the bat, just like always, has you really invested in what's going on. And again, what I always continue to love about Blake Crouch books is he has these dire, dire stakes, you know, for things that are going on, but he always makes it be about family in the end. And I do love that. You know, you got young kids, you got a good relationship with your spouse, those kinds of things. You're going to find plenty of things that you do like in here. And uh, yeah, again, he is undefeated in that regard. So still, uh, that would probably be towards the lower part of my favorites in Blake Crouch, but that's a strong list. You know, I think I've liked everything that I've read from him so far. I think this and Abandoned would probably be like my least favorite, but it's not because they're bad books at all. It's just something has to take that spot. But uh, yeah, very much recommend. I wouldn't say start here with Blake Crouch. I mean, I guess you could. It's just you'll probably be like, I don't see what you think so great about them. I always tell people, start with Dark Matter, start with Recursion, start with Wayward Pines, work your way backwards like I am, because then you'll see kind of his formula, his style, and you'll find plenty to like there. So the next step in my recovery to getting back to uh, being able to read at a decent pace again, dip back into some Stephen King, uh, took a long break now from the Into the Multiverse, uh, just actually by reread of Stephen King. I was doing. I just felt like I was doing too much uh, rereads every single every single month. I was looking at my list, and I was like, I had a King book, a Crichton book, and something else that was a reread. I was like, so I'm reading like one new book a month. I was like, that ain't gonna do it. I needed to cut this all out. And I said, I'm gonna probably stop all the rereads except for Stephen King. But even I was gonna be taking a break from that. But resuming now, finally with Dreamcatcher, and uh, I told the story last week that I, I liked this in my memory, you know, and I would say I'm about the halfway point now, so a reading pace has picked up, and I'm still not like blazing or anything like that, <laughs> uh, say about halfway here, which is almost 300 pages. I feel like the first one-third of this book, phenomenal stuff. It's great stuff. It's got all those things, you know, the childhood friends, kind of their life before and their life now, and he kind of tells that kind of like in the It style, where you're kind of going back and forth between when they were kids and now that they're adults and seeing these lifelong friends and then the sense of dread and the paranoia and then just the actual gasps of horror, all really, really, really good. It's all really great. Then this character named Kurt shows up. Yeah. And I don't mind the character, but I do feel like the book completely changes into something else after that. And I think that's kind of where people kind of get lost with this book because they wanted it to just be about those four or five friends here at the beginning of the story. And then he kind of introduces new characters and how you feel about those characters is how you're going to feel about the rest of this book. So then it kind of turns into like an alien invasion kind of storyline. And it does, it does change things quite a bit and gets away from the horror and just gets into like a monster movie. So I am liking what I have read so far. But I'm starting to see, okay, yeah, the book does hit a screeching halt around the one-third mark. But that first third is just awesome, awesome stuff. So I'll be interested to see uh, next week when I talk to you guys about how I feel, hopefully, at the end of this. So that leads me, guys, to what am I going to read? Now, clearly, Finishing Dreamcatcher is going to be first. I hope I can do that this week. I feel like my, my pace has picked up significantly, but I'm still not to the point where I'm going to be, you know, telling you about the two books that I read this week. Uh, so I'll be finishing up Dreamcatcher, and then the final step in getting back to uh, being able to read sci-fi and fantasy will be Streets of Laredo, which, as some of you know, is the sequel to Lonesome Dove, one of my favorite books I have ever read. So I had always said... I was treating Lonesome Dove as a standalone. I wasn't planning to read the entire series. And then it completely blew me away and became one of my favorite books ever. And I said, well, 
I'm interested to see what else Larry McMurtry can do because I feel like uh, no one no one ever says it's as good as Lonesome Dove or better than Lonesome Dove. Right, take it back. People never say it's better than Lonesome Dove, but there are plenty who say that the sequels are as good as Lonesome Dove. And if that's the case, I mean, oh my God, wow. So uh, yeah, I'm not really ready to just say, hey, I'm a Westerns fan now, but as much as I'm going to say, I'm a Larry McMurtry fan now after that one book. So I'll be curious to see where this goes uh, with the sequel, see what uh, Captain Call is up to, and see what is really on the horizon for him after what happened at the end of Lonesome Dove. You know, there's lots of things that I don't want to spoil if you haven't read Lonesome Dove, but lots of things that weren't tied up. Uh, with some characters in that story, uh, mainly with Newt, and I want to see if that kind of comes back into play or not in this. And if it doesn't, that's cool. I'll be interested to see where he goes after this because his life was very much at that final crossroads, I felt like. So I kind of want to know what he does do next. And this is a little, a little lighter. I mean, for Larry McMurtry, I feel like this is a pretty small book. I think this is the smallest book in all of the Lonesome Dove books. So uh, hopefully it won't take too long to get through it. But uh, if it's anything like Lonesome Dove, like I said, I just couldn't put that book down. Just kept reading, kept reading, kept reading, kept reading. And I do not regret it, and I miss it daily. How about uh, this week on the channel, guys? did a couple of videos for you. I had a, a, my book haul for March of 2024. has some really, really nifty things on there. I uh, can never say thank you enough for the things that you guys send me. And if I can help anyone out just by, you know, getting some presence on your book, if I can't, don't have time to read it, that's that's something I feel like I can do. And hopefully it helps you out. That's why I say yes when people ask if they can send me their book. So I probably won't have a chance to read it. You know, more than likely, I'm not going to be able to read it. But, you know, if I can just, uh, you know, get some eyes on it in my own way, I'm happy to help. But uh, again, book hauls, I don't really know if there's anything that you don't know about them at this point. I've done them monthly for years now, and uh, I, I enjoy doing them because, like I said, they always create really, really good conversation. I did a quick little clip, I guess you call it, of a uh, my book of the month. So I, I'm going to isolate my books of the month for people who might be looking for a review of that particular book. So I did my book of the month, which was from my monthly wrap-up, but that was for Blackwater. So a quick little clip about why Blackwater was my book of the month for March. And I've talked at ad nauseum about Blackwater here, guys. I can't say it enough. Read Blackwater. It's really, really good. And then I, I planned on doing that Faithful in the Fallen video this week. And I'd gotten some really good art from John and Ed and Will Gwynn. And I was really getting gearing up to get ready for it. This guy, just time. I'm just I'm just running out of time every single day. The next day I'll look up at the clock and it's eight o'clock. And I'm like, I'm not gonna record anything right now. So it's just it's just a matter of not having enough time right now, and when I'm going to do a, a, a dramatic reading uh, for those, well, an intro for one of those, it, it takes a while to make those. I just didn't have, I just ran out of time. So I said, I'm going to pull forward a video I'd planned to do next week, which was an update to my top 10 fantasy series of all time. Now, that's a list I see a lot of booktubers make about every three months, and I understand why. It's, it's a very, very popular video. It gets a lot of attention. For me, I said, if there's not really much of a change, I don't feel like I want to redo that list, but it had been two years, felt like I had read enough new stuff, and there were some major changes in it. If you go towards the end of the list, it's the first time, like the first two times I did that, that, that list, I think like my top five kind of stayed the same. Major changes just go around. Some have been received uh, warmly, some not so much. And I have concluded that I will never be able to make Brandon Sanderson fans happy. I love you guys, but it's like, okay, don't count the Cosmere as one. Then it was like, okay, well, why are you counting the Cosmere as separate entities, but you're counting this as like, why are you counting the Olings as one? Oh, I don't like that you counted Mistborn Era 2 books with Mistborn Era 1. Guys, chill, chill. I love Brandon Sanderson. I love Stormlight Archive. It's on the list, and I talked about why you know Stormlight Archive has a chance to be a top five series for me, but right now it's outside looking in. So uh, yeah, a list like that, you're always going to upset some people. The, the biggest complaint I always get is how I don't include series that I've never read before, which I think is totally weird. It would be hard for me to include a series I've never read before in my personal top 10 favorites, but that seems to be the comment that I get the most. But I am glad that people do enjoy that, and I, I'm glad people aren't too hard on me because, I mean, I gave really good reasons why my number one changed this time. And it's something that some people just can't get on board with. And I understand that. I understand that. But I give my reasons why I finally have a new number one. And we did not have a three-peat on this list. So a fun video to make. It really is. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that it did uh, get to a lot of attention. Because, uh, like I said, I feel like it brings a lot of new eyes to the channel when they see something like that. And I've gotten a lot of people to be like, okay, I've never read Dark Tower. I've, you know, I've been putting off reading Harry Potter or something like that. And they, they, they feel like, okay, 
you've sold it to me enough now I can finally do it. Or I didn't read the Song of Ice and Fire books because I was upset about the TV show and you've given me the ammo that I need to finally go and do that. So I'm happy. That's that's the, In the end, that's the goal of a video like that. And then just real quick, guys, I realized on April 12th, Friday, it was exactly five years to the day that I uploaded my very first uh, book video, my introduction for the channel and my first Wheel of Time video. And it was just one where I was just saying, hey, here's what I want this channel to be. It was just kind of meant to be a brand extension of the podcast I was doing at the time because my podcast, was, we just talked about all kinds of media, anything, movies, music, books, games, whatever. And uh, he, he wasn't really uh, my partner. He wasn't really much of a book reader outside of comics. So I said, okay, I'll just make this like kind of little side thing for this. And then obviously you guys know how this ends. It got bigger to the point to where that's all I do now is just the Mike's book review. So uh, I said, hey, why don't I just do a live stream kind of to celebrate? So just a quick like 90 minute one. Uh, it was fun. Uh, just an AMA, whatever you guys wanted to, uh, to know about. I hadn't actually done a live stream in a while. I thought about doing one at 115,000 subscribers, which is just over the over the hill here. But I, I got to this first. And so I said, hey, why not go ahead and do it? And my wife actually did make an appearance at the very end of that, if you haven't watched it yet. So catch the replay if you missed it. I don't know how fun that is for you to not be an actual part of the audience asking questions and stuff. But I, I do love to do it. I love to take you guys crazy questions on the fly and wonder why in the world would you ask me that? <laughs> uh, so next week plans, guys, got a couple of things. Obviously, I'm going to try to get that Faithful in the Fallen video done this week. I finally have gotten, like I said, all the art together. I think I've gotten all the quotes together. I've even got the music picked out. It's just putting it together now. And that should, uh, that should be really, really fun because I do want to tell you guys why truth and courage is a way of life because Faithful in the Fallen as you saw in that top 10 fantasy series, is one of my favorites. And I can't wait to tell you guys just a little bit more. Something that my homie over at Library of a Viking did, he did a video recently about why are booktubers quitting? Why are they quitting? Why are they leaving YouTube? And I thought it was a really interesting topic. And I'm not saying I'm just going to completely like steal his idea. I'm, I'm not. Definitely not. And I want to give him all the credit in the world for this. I've had a lot of people, especially after I hit my fifth anniversary being like, how do you do it? How do you, how do you keep doing it for this long? You know, how do you make it through? How do you grind? How do you, you know, take the good with the bad? And cause I just could never find enough consistency. Cause I just want to kind of talk about, I guess you say why I'm still doing it much more than why I'm not quitting or anything like that. And then some of the feedback that I've gotten from some of my, uh, my peers that had started channels and they've, I've just seen them fizzle out because it's just, it wasn't what they were hoping it was going to be. So I guess I'll kind of be looking at all angles of it about, you know, why are booktubers quitting? Why am I not quitting? And, uh, you know, if you're looking and getting into it, you know, uh, here's some advice that I would give you. So I by no means think I have all the answers. I don't. I can just give you my experience with it and the things that have worked for me. But I think it's a good topic to tackle. And again, all credit to Johan. This was something that he actually came up with. And uh, I just kind of want to kind of elaborate on it and give kind of my take on it. But watch his original video to that if you haven't. I thought it was a very, very good piece. I, this one's just kind of an idea I'm noodling uh, because we'll talk about here when I get TV movie talk. There is the thing, you know, where they're starting to adapt video games now and some are better than others, you know, but it's not to the point anymore where it used to be where just like any adaptation of a video game was just terrible. It was just awful. I think we're getting to the point where some of them are getting good now. This is how it started with the, the, the uh, superhero boom is they started getting better. Next thing you knew, that's all there was. And I think that's going to happen next. You're going to see a lot of video games being adapted. And I thought about some things is, there's some really, really good game universes out there that I'm like, I wouldn't mind seeing novels set in that universe. And I think I could look at some of those and say, here's some very, very popular video games that I love or others love that I think would be really good in like an epic series kind of format. So that's one I'm kind of noodling. I don't really know exactly what that would be called. Maybe just you know, some video games I'd like to see. Usually it's books I'd like to see adapted to movies. How about some video games I'd like to see adapted to books? Because there is some really good lore and storytelling and a lot of these video games are out there now. If you're like me, you're still the single-player campaign storyline kind of kind of gamer. I think that there's plenty out there for you that uh, you would actually like to see in a written word format, or at least I would. So again, that one's just kind of uh, just a, a, a new random thought. So uh, I, I don't know if I'll actually get to that one anytime soon. That's just something I'm kind of thinking about. You guys, let me know if you think that's stupid or not. It's just, I don't know. One, one, sometimes I think it sounds really neat. Other times I think that's a dumb topic. I don't know. You guys let me know. So TV and movie talk before I go. What brought that thought on is we're watching the Fallout show on Amazon Prime. And guys, I cannot believe it. They did it. It is very good. It is very good. This is someone it is a veteran of the Fallout universe. I have played three 
four, New Vegas, one and two. So I've played one through four and New Vegas, but I haven't played 76 or Tactics or uh, was it Brotherhood? I haven't played those, but I played the main light series. I love the lore in this universe. I love it so much. Like when I first started playing Fallout 3, I got so addicted to that storyline. I was just like eating up any kind of information I could about the in-world history. It's so deep and so good. And what's amazing about the show is they just completely go for it with the quirkiness of Fallout because it is a very, very unusual game. In fact, people that are watching the show, I have a lot of people ask me, can I watch a series without playing the game? It's like, I, mean, I guess you can. It, you just might think, this is really, really strange. I mean, that's just how it is in the game. The aesthetic of that show... Perfect. You can tell the people involved really, really love this universe because everything looks like it is ripped straight from that game. I do think that the Wasteland could look a little bit better. I'm just not really sure exactly what they could do to make it look like that without it just looking completely phony. But I love there's so much use of practical effects, like the Brotherhood of Steel Armor. The power armor is practical and it looks amazing. I love that so much, you know. But uh, the creatures are all crazy looking. There's so many, I mean, uh, there's a billion Easter eggs per episode, but never in a way where you're like, hey, remember this thing you like in the game? Ha ha. It's just they're there, you know, if you're looking for them. I feel like that's for the fans of the game. And I do like that they've set this, you know, a little further in the timeline so it can stay within the canon of that universe, but they don't feel beholden to do something exactly like it was in the game. So a different location. You are a, a, a couple decades later than Fallout 4, I believe. And it's just, they're telling oh, a story in that world, and I'm here for it. I love it. First, people complained about some things that they felt like it's kind of a, kind of a modernized, I guess I would say. And I just want to tell them, you, no, guys, I know you think that about everything, but that theme is in the game. Those themes are in the games. Those conclusions have been speculated upon by the fans for years about what actually caused the bombs to drop, you know? So I know that there are a lot of things where you look at that Amazon Prime has done, and you feel like, oh, well, they're trying, they're just grinding their ax. I don't think so with this, guys. This is very, very faithful to that in-canon universe, and there are those things already baked into that universe that uh, you just kind of got to roll with. But sometimes, guys, just turn your brain off and have some fun. It's so rare where we get a really, really fun, faithful adaptation like this. And uh, just enjoy it, man. Enjoy it. I saw people trying to find things to complain about with Dune 2 with that. It's like, man, just enjoy it. Enjoy it. Look, I have a lot of problems with a lot of the stuff that gets made now. I, I agree. But sometimes when something's good, man, let yourself enjoy it. Let yourself enjoy it. And this is great. And Walton Goggins, guy doesn't miss. He is awesome in everything. I've been watching him since The Shield. I think he is just an amazing actor. He's one of those actors like really, really talented, but wasn't blessed with, I would say, traditional good looks. Let's just put it that way. Not that I'm, you know, anything nice to look at. I'm just saying that Walton Goggins, probably not the prettiest guy, you know, but uh, he is an amazing actor. And even uh, playing a ghoul on the show where he's got no nose, he's amazing. He's just so so good. He's so good. He's so great in this show. That whole trio, the main trio of cast in the Fallout uh, TV series is just great. And as a Fallout fan, I'm very, very happy and I did not expect it. And Prime Video, look, I know we give them a lot of crap for Rings of Power. We give them a lot of crap for Wheel of Time. And yeah, they're bad shows. They deserve to get crapped on for that. They've had a lot of hits too. They've had a lot of good ones. Bosch is really great. Reacher is one of my favorite shows. Terminalist was really freaking good. The Boys is excellent. So, I mean, they have really good shows. And I would add Fallout to that now. And I would say they're not a real comparison because they're different shows. But the way everyone was freaking out about The Last of Us, and I was very disappointed as a game fan, I'm freaking out about Fallout because as a game fan, it's exactly what I wanted. And I'm very very happy with it. So I hope you guys will check it out. It's actually got me playing the game again. I actually played Fallout 3 on uh, on uh, Game Pass last night. Just want to see how it aged. And I played it for like four hours. And I was like, yeah, I guess it's aged fine. So yeah, Fallout. Very, very good. There was a trailer for Dark Matter, the final trailer. May 8th is the premiere of that. Blake Crouch is the showrunner on it, guys. So I expect it to be very good. Apple TV, their quality is amazing, so I expect it to be a very faithful and very, very good and well-budgeted television show. And guys, it's just an amazing story. So if you haven't read the book yet, I say do it. Do it now and then watch the show on May 8th. But uh, either way, you know, just you want to just watch the show. I think it's going to be very good. I think Joel Edgerton is really, really underrated. Jennifer Connelly, that's like probably one of my earliest crushes in my life. So uh, I'm very happy with the casting involved in everything, and I can't wait to see how they bring that story to life. And I've had a lot of people ask me if I'm watching Three Body Problem on Netflix. I plan to. Guys, we just got so many other shows going on right now. We're finishing up Ted Lasso. We're trying to finish up The Sopranos. Uh, now we're watching Fallout. So we just got to kind of cut kind of cut it uh, in, in later. It's a huge hit for Netflix, by the way. Huge, massive hit 
for Netflix. And so it's weird they haven't actually uh, announced a season two yet. But uh, yeah, I, I think that the showrunners, you guys know who they are. And that's why a lot of people won't watch it because they're still mad about Game of Thrones. And I said, when these two guys have source material to adapt, they're very good. Remember when Game of Thrones was really good? It's because it was the same showrunners back then too, when it was really, really good. But uh, look, I, I don't, I don't pass them of any blame of what they did to that show at the end when they ran on source material. But with source material, they're very good at doing literal adaptations. And it sounds like Three Body Problem is doing that. But they say they want to do uh, the three books over four seasons. They have the story all mapped out how they want to do it because I think some things from books two and three are kind of littered into season one, and they're going to kind of expand upon upon those going forward. But I'd be stunned. If this doesn't get a season two, because you look at like the, the numbers, you know, Netflix doesn't release their actual numbers, but it's like it's like their most viewed show for like three weeks straight. It's it's going to get a season two, and everyone's talking about it. Everyone's talking about it. There's so many theory videos out there for it, and uh, but I do plan to watch it. I do. I, I bounce off the book because I felt like it just it just had nothing to do with character, and I have to have character in my in my actual books here. I have to have some good characters to go off of. But I feel like the show is always going to be able to fix that a little bit. And it sounds like they have. And I'm excited to do it. But guys, that was my week. I got to get out of here. I'm taking my oldest kid to the Astros game today. We got to leave in about 30 minutes. So (laughs) I'm going to slap this together real quick and get it out there for you guys. So sorry again about the delay. I'll try to get my regular schedule rolling here again soon. But I'd love it if you drop in the comments, guys. Let me know what you're watching, what you're reading, what you're listening to, what you are playing. And I will talk to you there.